What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be bringing you my round 10 review, how I went this week. Bloody hell, it's been a roller coaster of a season. I'm going to cover my trades, how they turned out for me, along with some of my better performers and guys that let me down. So, enjoy the video, guys. So, going into this round, I was expecting to have a relatively poor week. I did opt to hold Andrew Brayshaw on the bench as I thought it was probably going to just be the one week and it does look like that's going to be the case, but it did work out better for my buy structure and I wanted to progress my team elsewhere. So I took the hit this week in order to strengthen my side going forward. As a result, I had to play an extra rookie on the field this week, so I knew I was going to lose about 50 to 60 points straight off the bat. I ended up scoring 21-61, which was a little bit below the benchmark. And as a result, I slipped about 50 spots in rank, but I'm still ranked 576. So I'm in a good position heading into the buys. I'm quite happy where I'm at and my team is in a strong position. I'm happy with what my team's looking like currently. So... Jumping into the guys that had big weeks for me, all the usual names, all the guys that are just absolute studs of the game, guys you expect to see this from, but it is nice for these big scores to pop up in your team. So I had Jackson McRae, Brody Grundy, Tom Mitchell, and then Aaron Hall just keeps getting things done, and... The main man for me, my guy, I started the season with him. He's been an absolute smash play. Paid for him priced at 80. He's currently averaging 108 with 129 last five game average. And that's a Darcy the King Parish. Let's just take a moment of silence to respect this absolute God and his fantasy craft. Thank you. Okay, carrying on with the video, guys. So, negative three. I had quite a few of these guys. So, I did have some big scores, but I had quite a few that let me down. Jaden Short, straight off the rip on the first game with a 61. That was painful. He's someone that I'm going to be looking to move on during the buys. I also had Oleg Markov, along with Tom Phillips, who's been one of the most fucking disappointing picks this year. And Riley O'Brien, you can chuck him straight in the fucking bin as well. So, those were some of the guys that let me down. They're letting me down on, on a consistent basis too. So, a lot of those guys I'll be looking to move on during the buy period potentially. And guys like Phillips and Markov, if it suits your buy structure, you can probably look to offload now. As round 12 players, you tend to want to keep through the buys, but... I still think I prefer to offload these rookies first. So having a look at how my trades went last week, overall pretty stoked. I went Jai Farrah to Isaac Heaney, and I also went Tom Power to James Harms. So I wasn't super stoked on picking up Harms as essentially he was just the only guy I could afford. So I went to him... It was an upgrade. I didn't like it, particularly for the fact that Viney was going to come back. But news has just emerged that Viney's still two to three weeks away. So that makes the trade a lot better. And I'm actually stoked now that I did make that move in the end. So those were the trades. Both turned out great. Heaney is going to be a guy that a lot of people target this week. He's very cheap, so... I got on the week early and hopefully he stays injury free and can ride out that 80 plus 
average that I'm expecting from him. At this point in the year, it's around, going into round 11 now, so we've only got the two trades before we hit that first buy week. So you want to be making sure that you're fixing up these red dots, that sort of stuff, making sure your bench is looking healthy. But you still want to be trying to get rookies off the field as well. So I'd be using those two trades to make sure your buy structure is good heading into next week. As for my team, I'm pretty much ready now. So it's just a case of fixing up bench and getting rookies off the field for me. And I'm looking to potentially trade James Jordan, Chad Warner, those types this week. I could potentially do a bench fix job as well. I'm not 100% sure yet. That sort of call is going to depend on what we get when teams drop. There's a sneaky chance we could get Finlay McRae named again. I think Highmore will get named this week too, so we could get some of those non-playing bench guys actually named. So I'm just going to wait and see there before I potentially pull any trade moves. If you guys do need some last-minute help with the buys, I have got an article on my website which will guide you in preparing for the buys. It's quite late now, so there's not too much you can do, but it's still a great read. So I'll link that in the description below for you guys. As usual, I will have the trade guide out in the coming days, and that will give you guys an indication of who I'm looking at and who I think is right for the picking, along with some guys that I'd potentially just keep an eye on and watch over the next few weeks as Guys, you could trade in during the buys, potentially. That being said, that's how I went this week, guys. Not the greatest week for me, but knowing that I'm going to get some strength back this week and improve my side, I should be in for a big one this week. So I'm excited to see what this weekend's footy has in store for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show your support by leaving this video a like. Drop a comment if you've got any queries. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the back field. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special.